Am I the a-hole for telling my sister to stop acting as if my fiancé were her son's dad? My 24 female sister, 23 female, had my nephew Joe during her first year in college. The father is absent in his life and only pays child support. She has always hated the idea of my nephew growing without a father figure, and since our only brother is 17 and our dad passed away 10 years ago, she dated recklessly for a while and introduced him to a bunch of dudes. Three years ago, I met my now fiancé, Gabriel, 28 male. He's really sweet and adores my family. He's financially stable and is good with kids, has a bunch of nephews on his own and comes from a good, big family. We've decided to be child-free, and if something happens to my sister and a few of Gabe's siblings, we're meant to be their legal guardians. But for the past year, my sister has grown comfortable with pushing Joe around Gabe. She always invites him to my nephew's activities, which is fine, but she acts as if Gabe were her guest and I'm his plus one, not otherwise. Plus, my brother used to be the one who got invited and he's not anymore. She asks Gabe to drive her and Joe to places, and my mom pointed out how they look like a family when he does it. She jokes about how much of a dad Gabriel is for Joe, and she had the audacity to ask him once if he was comfortable with adopting Joe, but she was drunk, so I'll give her that. Neither Gabe or I are comfortable with this. He doesn't know how to push it aside without hurting their feelings. Mom has told my sister countless times how this is inappropriate. But my sister always gets defensive and says that Joe chose him and it's not her fault. Things blew up last weekend when Joe asked Gabriel if he could call him dad because mom said it was fine. My sister was looking at them with the biggest smile on her face and I could notice how my mom and my brother were expecting his answer. Neither of them agree with it too. He sat Joe in his knee and kindly explained him how he wasn't his dad or even a dad figure, that he was Anne's soon-to-be husband and that made him his favorite uncle that even if he wasn't his dad, he would never leave him and they'll always be best friends. Joe, being the sweet kid he is, laughed and smiled and said that it was okay. Then he ran to the living room to play with something. I think the situation resolved itself just fine, but my sister didn't like it and started to fight with us. My mom kept telling her to shut up, but she was saying things like, What's wrong with you two? How can you say no to a little kid? He sees you as a father, so you should be proud of that. I had enough. But I told her that Gabriel wasn't Joe's dad and that she needed to stop acting as if he was because it was honestly embarrassing. She called me a selfish C-word and said that I was jealous of her kid. I just rolled my eyes and we decided to leave after her. She later sent me a text saying that it was best if we step out of Joe's life for a while or we will end up confusing him because he doesn't understand that Gabriel is not daddy. But as far as I could see, he got it pretty well. Added to Dwed, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to say that we're already Joe's legal guardians, but if something happens to my sister, and we hope it never does, we'll be taking care of him. Also, my sister is not right. I agree with that, but I doubt she ever gets violent. Now for the top comments. Not today, Hall, but you know your sister wants your fiancé, right? This right here. Sister is absolutely going to try to get fiancé to dump OP, if she hasn't already. As far as I know, she has never tried something like that. Neither my mom, Gabe, or I think that my sister might be emotionally interested in my fiancé. She only wants him as my nephew's father, but I don't think she's in love with him or something like that. I find it hard to believe she'd be pushing the dead angle without having any romantic interest in him. In any case, she could probably use some therapy to help with whatever issue she's dealing with. A normal person doesn't see their sister's fiancé as a viable father for their kid. Not today, home. Watch your sister. She is fantasizing about her boyfriend, and you aren't part of that fantasy. She is creating her own little family. Yikes. Poor Gabe. Also, poor Joe. The kid seems like a good one, but his mom will keep dragging him into these self-made miserable situations and keep pushing him towards emotional pain and turmoil. Not today, Hollow P, but keep a discreet eye out for Joe. He's really an awesome kid. Always laughing and playing. As hard as it may seem, my sister is a hell of a mother too. She takes excellent care for Joe. It's just the father issue that set her off. Next story is titled, Am I the a-hole for telling my mother-in-law that she will never see my child? Not really my mother-in-law, but girlfriend's mom. 
My girlfriend Ella and I have been together for almost four years now, and we are expecting our first child later on this year. Ella's five months pregnant. As much as I love Ella, I cannot stand her family, especially her mother. From the stories I've heard and from my own experiences with her, her mother seems to be an extremely disrespectful person. Because of her attitude, Ella has significantly cut contact with most of her family. We also didn't really tell them that we were pregnant, but they found out through Ella's cousin. Upon hearing about Ella's pregnancy, Ella's mom has been pestering us about inviting us to dinner to congratulate and celebrate our growing family. It's a nice gesture, but I was hesitant to accept because of the way that she and the rest of Ella's family usually act. After almost a month of ignoring the invitation, Ella convinced me to take her up on it. The dinner was held at a very expensive, very fancy, fine dining restaurant. At first, to my shock, the dinner was going well. Ella's mom apologized for her past behavior and stated that she wanted to be a good grandmother moving forward. Her sister also offered support in the form of babysitting, old baby clothes, etc. The conversation was friendly and I was very surprised to not hear anything insulting from Ella's mom directed at Ella. When Ella stepped out to use the washroom, Ella's sister made a comment about her supposed weight gain and offered me diet plans and exercise regimen to prevent her from getting too chunky. Her mom also pitched in about Ella's greedy eating habits. Just to be clear, my girlfriend isn't big. She's very tall and lanky, and even if she was the biggest woman in the universe, their comments would still be unacceptable. Ella's mom and sister also asked me not to tell Ella about our conversation, because she's apparently too sensitive. At this point, I wanted to leave. Once Ella came back, I announced that I wanted to leave the dinner early. Her family was surprised and asked me why, and I responded that I didn't see them fit to see my child and I wouldn't want to see them ever again. I was probably very impolite, but in that moment, I didn't care. Her mom was very upset, almost yelling in the restaurant about how I couldn't leave without paying their bill, as I was the man of the table, and how I couldn't make husband demands as a boyfriend. Meaning, I can't forbid a grandmother from seeing her child because I'm not a true family. Again, I didn't care and I left with Ella. I later found out that Ella's mom's card was declined and they were forced to phone a friend to bring some money. Very embarrassing. Ella thinks that I could have been less harsh, because now her sister is spreading rumors about her to the family. Not day home. So, wait. Ella's family invited you to a swanky dinner, expected you to cover everyone's tab, and had zero backup plan for if you declined? Never mind the insulting Ella behind her back drama. That alone makes them the a-holes. Continue to ignore them and focus on getting Ella on the same page with you about what role they're going to be allowed to have in the kid's life. And how to draw boundaries because it doesn't sound like she fully realizes how messed up this all is yet. I think the saddest part about this whole situation is that Ella didn't really react after I told her what they had said about her. Her reaction was more like, oh, they're doing this again. As if she's heard it a million times before. All this to say, I think deep down she understands how messed up the situation all is. I think she just has hope that they would change. She's desensitized to it because she's used to this. I mean, this is the nicest way. Your girlfriend needs therapy. It's going to help her understand everything a lot more if she gets an unbiased professional opinion. Because the way her family acts is disgusting and not normal, and she needs to know that. I'm glad you had her back. Good on you, OP. She's already in therapy, and she's working on herself, don't worry. Not day home. So she invites you to dinner and then expects you to pay. That's rich. Sounds like Karma also joined that dinner party. Not even just a normal dinner. It was a proper, posh restaurant. Did I read at least right that you paid for yourself and Ella? Partly courtesy, but also because I would not want to owe someone like these people a new dime. I did not pay for anyone's meal. I actually just left, which was probably a really horrible thing to do, but I was so mad at that point. Not day home. They were just being nice to her face in order to get access to the baby. They only messed it up by being snide in front of you when she had gone to the bathroom, showing they hadn't changed in the slightest. I wouldn't be surprised if mother-in-law knew her card would decline. It was counting on you to cover the bill too. Maybe you could have handled it a little better, but I don't blame you one iota for what you did. 
cut them off and leave them cut off. You can't really control what they say about Ella. Anyone with half an ounce of sense will realize it's all BS, though. Congratulations on your upcoming arrival, and good luck. Next story. Am I the a-hole for refusing to pay my brother-in-law for babysitting my daughter? I, 34 male, have a 5-year-old daughter. My wife is deceased and my in-laws are my only supporters. Some days ago, I had an appointment with a dentist, and the babysitter who was supposed to watch my daughter called and cancelled. I didn't know what to do, so I called my brother-in-law asking if he was willing to watch his niece till I get back from the appointment. He said he wasn't sure since he had a couple of tutoring sessions to get done. I told him to skip and I dropped my daughter off at his apartment then left. When I came back to pick her up in the evening, brother-in-law asked me to pay him for watching my daughter for four hours. I was taken aback and asked if he was serious. He reminded me that he had two tutoring sessions that he had to cancel last minute. And since I pushed him to stay with my daughter and watch her, then I need to pay him. I refused and said he was being somewhat greedy and an opportunist to even think sitting his knees would grant him easy money. He said it wasn't easy money but time wasted in his very busy schedule. We had an argument and I left with my daughter. He called my in-laws who said that he was in the right and I should have paid him for his time and be appreciative of his efforts. I told them I didn't expect him to ask for money, but they said it's what I do with babysitters. Well, yes, but he's family, and last thing I expect from him is to ask for money for staying with his knees. Besides that, I had an emergency and couldn't miss the appointment knowing how hard it is to get another one. He's still insisting on being paid, and I keep refusing. At this rate, I think is being ridiculous, but I don't know. It all seems to be a misunderstanding. Say I did pay him. This would set the precedence for him to keep expecting money every time. Am I the a-hole for not paying him? Now for the comments. I forced my brother-in-law to cancel two tutoring sessions, losing him money to make him watch my child. Then, instead of offering to cover the money lost, I refused because family equals free labor. Even when you inconvenience them. Fixed it for you. You're the a-hole. If I were him, I'd never sit for you again. You forgot to add, my babysitter who I was going to pay cancelled. Opie, you're the a-hole in a way you will regret. Now, your brother-in-law won't be available as a backup in emergencies in the future, and you will be out of luck. Opie's in for a real surprise when he tries randomly dropping the kid off again, and brother-in-law calls CPS for an abandoned child. You're the a-hole. He said he couldn't watch her. You dumped her on him anyway. He had to cancel paid work. He is not trying to profit from you. He is trying to recoup his losses. Accusing the brother-in-law of being greedy and opportunist, when well, this man is out here trying to force other people to miss out on work and provide him free labor. Yikes. You're the a-hole. You're the a-hole. You lost me when he told you he had to tutor and you told him to skip that. Like what? Now, I never charge for babysitting my family, but I also would not have tolerated someone telling me to change my plans last minute to accommodate their emergency. Now for the last story. Am I the a-hole for saying I told you so when my wife got banned from seeing our grandson? My wife has been in constant contact with our daughter-in-law, our son's wife, about plenty of things. The very recent argument ensued after my wife kept insisting on being present in the delivery room despite getting a resounding no. My wife was having none of it. And my son and his wife changed hospitals to throw my wife off after she threatened to barge into the room. She eventually found out I didn't tell her and got very mad. I told her to stop and think because if she keeps this up, she will lose all chances to see her grandbaby. She told me off and went to make a huge scene at a hospital my daughter-in-law was at. It did not end well. And my wife came home crying hysterically after getting chewed out by our son and kicked out of the hospital. Things remained tense till my son called to invite me to see the baby for the first time. He did not invite my wife, which sent her into a mental breakdown. I had an argument with her after she tried to guilt me into staying with her and shame my son for keeping his mom away from her grandbaby. But I just told her I told you so, and said that she had plenty of opportunities to get right with our daughter-in-law, but she blew them away because of her stubbornness. 
She started yelling about how unsupportive and cruel I was, just like our son to be siding against her instead of defending her, and staying home with her when our son banned her from meeting our grandbaby. I went anyway, and she kept arguing about me taking the wrong side instead of defending her. I feel bad for her, but at the same time, I think that she was being irrational and made this a competition, despite knowing how our son and his wife felt about her behavior. Not stay home. I consider a divorce over this, to be perfectly honest. I mean, honestly, she has effectively ruined all future holidays. What the hell? Your wife is being so irrational here, I'm a little worried for her. Is she this way about other things, or is this new behavior for her? You might want to see a medical professional with her. Not stay home. I was also wondering the same thing. This is off the charts crazy. Not stay home. There's been similar posts like this in AIT and just no mother-in-law. And I'm so interested to know, because it's never from the husband slash father-in-law's perspective. Why on earth do you stay with this woman? Seriously, this can't be an isolated component of her personality, because this behavior is a pattern and an extreme one at that. So please, I gotta know, why are you remaining married to such a selfish jerk? Money, most likely. The older we get, the more difficult it is to divorce. Unless you've saved enough money for both parties to go separate ways, it can cause a financial blow to split your 401k and any other retirement savings in half. Sometimes it's easier to live with a certain amount of crazy, provided it isn't abusive, than to lose one's financial stability at an age where you don't have enough time to rebuild. Not stay home. I actually want to say thank you, because there are many husbands who would have thought that having their wives back meant going along with her bad as crazy, and you are an example of how that simply isn't the case. Your wife is abusive to your daughter-in-law, and you refuse to play a part in that, so thank you. You raised your son well, because he had his wife's back when she was in a vulnerable position. And you had your wife's back by telling her she was being an a-hole when she needed to hear it, even though it didn't make a difference. Bravo, OP. 